Hey everybody, welcome back to another iteration of the Lighthouse Report and our adoption review. Going to kind of run through a lot of the initiatives that I've found over August. Some of them may be familiar, some of them may not be. Also a little bit of a deeper dive into some of these news announcements to give you guys scope as far as what's kind of occurring across the globe as far as the digital economy is, or economy is concerned. Um, so first and foremost, DTCC, the Depository uh, Trust and Clearing Corporation's Project Ion platform now, now live in a parallel production environment, processing over 100,000 transactions per day on distributed ledger technology. Now, if we go into some of the organizations that have been involved in the forming of this, Apex Clearing Corp, some of these are probably very familiar, Barclays, BNY Mellon, Charles Schwab, Citadel, Credit Suisse, Fidelity, Finality, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, you get the picture, right? Now, this is being facilitated by R3 Corda, um, certainly kind of that enterprise, um, enterprise grade distributed ledger. And what they state down here below is certainly not using um, any crypto assets to start with, uh, but they did. I, I've seen some tweets and things like that, or, or messages that were sent out to. Uh, to the DTCC platform for ION, and they basically came back stating that stable coins certainly are going to be one of the next initiatives that they're going to utilize. And then if we read this last post down here, with the production parallel now live, DTCC is working closely with its clients on a phased expansion of the platform. The Project ION platform will continue to be enhanced according to client and industry needs. Now they're moving towards T plus zero. If you're not aware, you know, traditional settlement cycles, T plus two is like two days, T plus one is one day, um, T plus zero, you know, netting within T plus zero is essentially gets us to instantaneous settlement, instantaneous transactions, real-time gross settlement across the board. Um, I did want to say earlier that IBM, Axony, and R3 were kind of some of the earlier uh, platforms that were talked about for building out this distributed ledger solution for der derivatives processing. If you're not aware... DTCC, you know, the term all the money gets thrown around a lot in the cryptocurrency space. DTCC, you know, kind of really does represent what we would consider, you know, all the money. Um, now, which digital assets are going to be integrated over time? That's certainly up for discussion. But just to give you guys a little bit of a breadth of scope here, this is their 2021 annual report. The total value of securities process, $2.37 quadrillion dollars. So they even state down here, in a year of market shocks and elevated volumes, we again, so this is DTCC, set a new record of transaction handling. And that transaction handling from DTCC on the annual basis is worth $2.37 quadrillion in 2021. Pretty massive, right? All right. Other notable uh, information and um, incorporations of kind of DLT crypto aspects within August. Coinbase, selected by BlackRock to provide uh, BlackRock's Aladdin platform clients access to cryptocurrency trading and custody via Coinbase Prime. If you're not aware, I've seen a lot of um, misconstrued numbers uh, throughout the space with uh, kind of news aspects around how big this Aladdin platform is. And I think, I don't even think I really need to describe how big BlackRock is, right? Uh, their Aladdin platform essentially deals in 21.6 trillion assets only from one third of the largest platform users, as far as clients are concerned. Uh, BlackRock started selling Aladdin in 1999, which analyzes and tracks investors' portfolios and can help professional money managers spot risks. Vanguard and State Street Global Advisors are a part of this platform. They are the largest fund managers in the world after BlackRock. Um, half of the 10 top insurers buy assets globally. Japan's $1.5 trillion government pension fund. Apple, Microsoft, and Google's parent company firm Alphabet, the three biggest U.S. public companies, all rely on the system. This report that was performed by Business Insider basically states that $21.6 trillion in assets sat on the platform from just a third of its 240 clients. So essentially 80 of those clients make up $21.6 trillion. And... You can kind of start doing the math right there. Like, where does where does the Aladdin platform really sit as far as how much they really handle from a from a dollar standpoint? Um, Twenty one point six trillion from the third, the, the third largest ones. Maybe we're around forty trillion, something like that. Fifty trillion. Um, 
and, and you know, even if you were to divide that out into smaller increments, one to three percent once uh, access into crypto, the numbers are pretty much, even if you go with the smallest number, it's pretty much where the digital asset and cryptocurrency market is sitting right now, probably just under a trillion dollars. So it's, it's going to be pretty much bolstering up this entire ecosystem, at least in my opinion, over just a little bit of time here. Interestingly enough, I did find this as well. This was published. Now, this is published in May, but I did stumble across this. This is the United Nations um, Capital Development Fund, right? And they're talking about this implementation handbook on interoperable payment solutions. Now, pay attention to this for investment. It's talking about basically drafting up this entire scope of work and deliverables throughout this handbook. And it's talking about driving experience through different countries for their insight um, in which financial service providers within those countries have integrated with global payment networks and international hubs. Now, they're referring to Ripple as a global payment network slash international hub, along with MFS Africa, which I believe has ties to Mojo Loop, which deals in Ripple as well, along with Thunes, which we know Thunes has previously had Stellar Lumens um, type of initiatives years ago, uh, and then more recently even Ripple, TerraPay, et cetera. I think TerraPay is one of those unannounced Ripple partners. Now, I'm going to just briefly go through here because I have a lot of bullet points within the written portion of uh, the adoption review, but this Cap Gemini document is really great. Um, it deals in some heavy heading facts that I think anybody can read and be like, wow, something is really happening across the globe here with digital assets, a digital economy, DLT, blockchain, and crypto. Nine of 10 central banks globally exploring digital currency with more than 50% of those banks now running concrete ex uh, experiments. Um, on DLT. Now, if we get under digital assets and tokens here, it talks about Euroclear. It talks about the European Central Bank. It talks about the UK government. Um, organization, institution after institution after organization after organization, they're all integrating into digital assets to the point where we keep asking, when is the traditional financial world going to get into crypto? Where they are, if you read through and pay attention to what's going on on a monthly basis, they're already here. Um, so it'll be interesting to watch how it plays out. Now, I did also find this. This is a document that is called Decoding CBDC or Central Bank Digital Currency. Uh, it's facilitated by Currency Research and Lipis Advisors. What was interesting to me in this, this is a lot of things that we've been speculating on, especially with Hedera and ISO 20022, which essentially ISO 20022 is kind of this um, this richer payments messaging format that's going to be you know utilized globally by 2025 um there's certainly some initiations within go lives before that but swift's uh swift who deals in all the messaging pretty much globally for all the banks and all the financial institutions their drop dead date is 2025. Uh, a lot of speculation around hedera being iso 20022 compliant and through mtech which is a cbdc infrastructure or central bank digital currency infrastructure partnered with hedera uh, and utilizing Hedera's consensus service, uh, Hedera does become ISO 20022 uh, compliant through MTEX platform. Uh, Ripple was in this as well. And some other interesting initiatives with Ripple was being, you know, you know, this private central bank digital currency ledger, which in my opinion has always kind of been like these federated side chains that will launch. Um, if I scroll down through here, though, uh, I'm not going to spend too much time. There is some great information in here. CBDC technology solutions and infrastructure providers. You can go into research partners or so, re, like real solutions providers, which deals in MTech, Ripple, uh, Bit, eCurrency, uh, in infrastructures, Hedera, Ripple, Hyperledger, Algorand, uh, Corda, Stellar, third-party consultancies and technology partners, Accenture, who we know is obviously a RippleNet integrator, etc. Um, there's a lot of information in here, even to the point where we see uh, underneath Ripple, uh, notable partnerships for CBDCs, uh, Bhutan and Palau. You can see Stellar, Ukraine. You can see Corda. You can see Hedera Hashraf, Haiti. Now, they're omitting within this document, MTAX Project New Dawn, uh, which we've talked about you know, earlier on my personal YouTube channel. Um, certainly deals in CBDC infrastructure as well for a digital dollar in the United States. But you can see right here as well, ISO 20022 interoperability through MTEC CBDC infrastructure using Hedera's consensus service is ISO 20022 interoperable. Uh, and you get into the Ripple CBDC platform as well, which is a permissioned, permissioned side chain of the XRP ledger. A lot of uh, information, a lot of documentation within this, which I just thought was found uh, fantastic. 
Uh, and then kind of at the back end of this, because we did hear of the ANZ Bank, which is the second largest bank in Australia uh, and New Zealand by market cap, uh, essentially using their ASDC stablecoin uh, integration within the Hedera network that is going to be basically facilitated um, on top of some other initiatives with a partnership with Open Zeppelin tying into Hedera as well. I'm not going to get too deep into this. This is a massive announcement as is. But if we dive back a little bit, this might be something that you guys haven't seen. So ANZ Bank, their ASDC uh, stablecoin, Australian dollar-backed stablecoin, Open Zeppelin, Hedera, right? This is pretty much over the past couple of days here. If you dive back a little bit further into April of 2022 with... The Swift for Crypto, which is what Fireblocks is calling themselves, which is where Jay Clayton left um, the SEC in a, uh, you know early at his tenure and immediately became an advisor with Fireblocks. You can look into some of these initiatives within um, ASDC in here as well. What I found really interesting, Fireblocks was an integral part into the ANZ Australian dollar stablecoin. Believing that tokenized solutions are achievable, etc. But if we get out into this paragraph, this is kind of the bread and butter right here. And I'll leave you guys with this. The Australian dollar stablecoin ASDC was launched by Australia and New Zealand Banking Group, ANZ, one of the largest Australian banks on the Ethereum blockchain. So they did start with Ethereum, right? Um, where $30 million was minted using Fireblocks' tokenization solution and traded on the registered digital currency exchange ZeroCap. This last sentence is where it's all at, though. Institutional clients will have access to ASDC and retail clients at a later stage. I have heard whispers, and take this with a grain of salt, all the way back 9, 10, 11, 12 months ago that Fireblocks desperately wanted to reach out and integrate aspects around HBAR. Um, and this is just interesting to me because they were integ integral through their tokenization solution, uh, for facilitating this ASDC launch on Ethereum with the uh, with the ANZ uh, Australia and New Zealand Banking Group, um, and now we can see it moving to Hedera for essentially um, a more efficient network, right? Um, more efficient, highly scalable, secure, sustainable. It'll be really uh, interesting to watch how this all plays out. Um, it's been a it's been an interesting month. I wanted to thank you all for you know for your viewership and for paying attention to what's going on. I know that the market is not ideal right now from a price standpoint, and none of us can really control that. But what is occurring right now on a consistent basis is adoption full bore. And that is not going to stop anytime soon, in my opinion. And I will be back with you guys next month for next month's adoption review. I will talk to you guys when I talk to you. Thank you very much, and I appreciate it. Later.